Hello everyone. Please please, watch this video. This video is very important. Alright. What's the meaning of life? Before I traveled, I was very confused and frustrated. I wondered, do I must go to college? Do I really have to? Do I must work? Do I have to work for 40 years? Do I have to continue working until I retire? And then get six feet underground? Is that the meaning of life? That, that's all, is it really that? Or is there an alternative that is even better? That was what it was all about. I was so confused. After all, it all came down to this. I literally ran away from home. I literally did run away from home. Homeless. I've slept on the street for so many nights. I've slept in bathrooms. Slept in the mountains. Slept on rivers. Slept in deserts. I just literally slept anywhere and everywhere. After all the hard and crazy journey. The result was, I discovered happiness. I was so speechless. I understood life better. So, look, please watch this video. You will see the full journey. You will get the idea of what is it like. All right, let's go. February 25, 2016. I decided to leave home, just because home was way too boring. Spartansburg, South Carolina. So, I walked around 20 miles to my friend's home. Thanks for letting me stay at your place for one week. I literally did run away from home, but... How much money did I have? Not much, only a little. Just my disability welfare called social security income. That's all, nothing more. I didn't even care at all. You know, something like paying hotels, and all that comfort zone. Comfort zone, like hotels, food, and all that sissy stuff. No, nothing. They didn't exist for me. I didn't even care. I didn't even have any savings at all. I had nothing. I still left home anyway. I decided to randomly go to El Paso, Texas. I'm now on train going to New Orleans to get on another train. New Orleans, Louisiana. I ran away. So, how did I travel? I just simply used Greyhound buses all the way. Oh and also Amtrak trains. It was just two of those all the time. They were the cheapest options for me. I bought so many tickets. Here I am, New Orleans hum. Saw few college people sleeping on the street. Hangover, perhaps. At least there was one decent view of sunrise on the Mississippi River. El Paso, Texas. All of my money were invested too. Food and transportation like Greyhound and Amtrak. That's all, nothing more. El Paso, here I am. Mexico is right there, ghetto. El Paso was a lot better than New Orleans. Much better vibes here. Look, the food I bought was not from the restaurants. I just went to the food stores. I just bought bread loaves and ate it plain. I always ate it like that. I didn't complain. It had everything. I also usually bought apples and ate them raw. That's all. I couldn't afford to go to restaurants. I just couldn't afford them. I didn't have enough money. Or, I was hoping that I could swim in the Rio Grande. It was hot day. I walked until I couldn't walk anymore, so I decided to call it a day. I slept on the Rio Grande River, and saw that beautiful sunrise. Time to walk again. I climbed across the fence and wandered into the desert. Going there. It sure is a decent view. I'm getting thirsty now. Little water with me. I'm getting closer and closer to those mountains. Where did I sleep for most of the time? I usually slept in the bus stations or Amtrak train stations. I usually slept in the bus stations or Amtrak train stations. Also, sometimes at the riverbeds or under the bridges, I slept there. I slept like that for so many nights. I felt completely fine. I was okay. Except that I always hated rain, but for rest of the time, it was okay. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Good morning, Albuquerque. Oh, there's water in the Rio Grande River, but it's too cold to swim. I met some awesome deaf lady who lives in Albuquerque. Well, decent meal after 10 days of no decent meal. Thanks Sarah. Denver, Colorado. I eventually arrived in Denver, Colorado. Wow, well, it was very cold. I couldn't explore Denver because I had a knee injury from excessive walking. As I was having an extremely hard journey, I was very lucky to be popular on social media. So, as I traveled, I posted my whereabouts on Facebook to meet deaf people across the country. It was a very lucky opportunity. Salt Lake City, Utah. Railroading through the mountains of Colorado. Beautiful. Visiting the Great Salt Lake of Utah. Wow, beautiful. The landscape, the lake, it's also beautiful. Awesome deaf family in Utah. Cool. Reno, Nevada. Headed to Reno. Railroading through the Great Basin Desert and it is snowy. Strange. In about 45 minutes, I will be arriving Reno. Reno, here I am. The city is not that big, really. Hey look at that. I'm hiking to Lake Tahoe from Reno. Hopefully I can arrive in one day. So much snow, and it is getting dark, and I have no tent. As a result, I couldn't even get to the Lake Tahoe before sunset. It was too difficult. So, I slept under the tree for the night. I woke up with one inch snow on me. Ha <laughs> That night in Nevada was the worst. The most extreme night of my whole journey. Seriously. I was hiking the mountain. Without being on the trail. I was literally wandering. I was getting so far away in the mountains alone, and then it got dark. I was lost in middle of a snowstorm. I laid down under the tree. I didn't even have any tent. I only had a sleeping bag. I had no choice but to snuggle up under the tree, on the mountain slope. I covered myself with a sleeping bag, and it was still cold. I shivered the whole night. I was seriously hoping that I wouldn't get any frostbites. I was begging the universe so much. I was shivering the whole night. I hid inside the sleeping bag the whole night. I kept waking up every 30 minutes throughout the night. I endured the whole night. And finally, I woke up, and saw a sunrise. I got out of the sleeping bag and walked around. I was still alive. No joke. I'm not kidding. That moment. I felt so, so happy. I was so happy. I felt so good. I literally screamed that I am alive. 
I was screaming and cheering that I was not dead. I literally made it alive through. I survived the night. I was cheering so much. It felt so good. I instantly got back onto my feet and started hiking again happily. My morning face after shivering all night. Ha ha ha. Time to resume hiking. Beautiful mountains. I'm very close to Lake Tahoe. I tried hiking to there. But I couldn't. The hike was too hard. With three feet deep snow. Also, the mountain is very steep uphill. It is very hard to walk that far up. I decided to forget it. I'm going to go back down. Back to the town. And then I will go to Lake Tahoe by the road. I'm not even on the trail. I'm literally wandering in middle of a forest. Pretty interesting. Honestly, it is better than being on the trail. You know, doing it this way is much more challenging. Fun. And then, my friend's mother picked me up and we went to California. Also, as I traveled, I have learned a lot of things. I understood what it was like to be homeless. I understood completely. I now understand what it is like to be homeless. MHMM. Your number one enemy is... Guess who? Police officers. They are your number one enemy. They always... When I struggle with finding a place to sleep. And I try sleeping at the park. The place was nice enough, with trees. As I slept there, the police officer came and yelled at me to leave. They were all yelling at me that it was private property. I was very shocked. They were just pushing me to leave. Very rude. I didn't even know what to do. I just went to another place to sleep. One time, I didn't have a choice but to sleep in a public bathroom. I didn't have any place to sleep. The police officer came in again and angrily yelled at me to leave. I was completely helpless. I wandered outside on the streets during the night aimlessly. I struggled to find a place to sleep. So, after all that experience of being homeless, I truly hated police officers. Because they literally don't even care at all. They are always pushing us away instead of helping. They think that homeless people are failures of society. And we deserve it. I was very shocked and learned so much about them. Truly tragic. Driving through the Sierra Nevada mountains. Beautiful. We went to the Redwoods National Park. The trees here are taller than the Statue of Liberty. Swimming at the beach in Santa Cruz. I saved a little girl being stuck on that rock island. Ha ha ha. I just kept traveling like that. I kept going. It was working. The limited money was fine. I spent less than $20 every day. That's it. Nothing more. I was very tight. Literally just spent on the Greyhound buses. I kept riding on Greyhound buses. $20 a day, $20 a day. Kept going. Spending only $20 a day means in one full month costs only $600. That's all. That's all. Very cheap price. And I managed to travel that far with that kind of money. And even worse, you guys make excuses that you don't have enough money to travel. Really? For me, with only $600, I managed to travel so far. And you guys, are you guys kidding me? Portland, Oregon. Yay, Oregon. I'm riding a train from Sacramento to Portland. Oregon Shore is beautiful. Finally arrived at Portland. Bedtime. I also saw a rat frittering around. Welcome to Portland, Oregon. It is 6 in the morning. Beautiful. I got a seizure. Oh, it was not fun at all. One thing that I have to warn you about. I overdid my traveling. Being so hard all the time, and I ended up having a seizure. Because of too much stress. There's always stress on me. And it caused seizures. Look, after all the journey, I noticed that I had red hives on my arm and legs. I didn't know why I had gotten hives, so I did some research, and it is from stress. Basically, too much stress that caused seizures. That's one dark side of traveling this way. Seattle, Washington. My mother's side of family. Mount Rainier. The last time I've seen that mountain was when I was only 7 years old. I also visited Mount Rainier National Park. An amazing place to go, seriously. The mountain looks bigger and taller when you are far away, don't you think so? Space Needle. Haha, <laughs> this guy is hilarious. I love that guy so much. Perfect. I just got my first passport. Let's go to Canada. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. There's one positive thing. Okay, look. United States has very awful cops. They are all truly awful. Those guys, the police officers, they are like... They treat homeless people like... They are... Houseflies. Like, they are a nuisance, and always wanting them to go away. That's how they treat us. Always asking us to leave. Even though we have nowhere else to go or sleep. I acknowledge their ways. But, in Canada... The police officers are so much more compassionate and better. They were so much nicer. It was an interesting thing to see. I decided to skip Vancouver because I was too tired. So, I'm headed to Kamloops, British Columbia, and wow, mountains of British Columbia were truly jaw-dropping. So beautiful. I am definitely going here again later. It's really fun. Traveling is so much fun. But, at the same time, the part of sleeping on the street isn't fun. Oh well, but, it's all worth it. Here I am, Kamloops, British Columbia. Nice town. I'm at small town in British Columbia. Called Kamloops. I'm truly amazed of this nice town. Look at that. I'm finally feeling happy, finally. Before, I was only slightly happy, but as I traveled, my happiness gradually increased. For example, when I was in Louisiana and El Paso, I was only like, 5 or 10% happy. And now, I'm feeling like 25% happy. Wow. Finally. 
Well, I understand now. Making myself happy is the answer. Cheers. I love you all. Cheers. The water was cold. Ha 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 ha. Calgary, Alberta. I'm entering the Rocky Mountains of Alberta. So beautiful. This place is near to Mount Banff. Here I am. Calgary, Alberta. It is a really beautiful city. Then I rode a bus to Edmonton, Alberta. I slept by Saskatchewan River for the night. Ha 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 ha. I entered Canada, and I arrived at Edmonton, Alberta. Once I was there, I didn't even know where to sleep at all. So, I walked around and saw an icy river. And I walked around that place. I found a thicket of brushes, like a mini forest. I laid down there and slept. I slept for a full night, and woke up, started walking again. That's it. That's the free way to travel. You don't even have to pay for hotels. You just have to be really tough, that's all. Alberta School for the Deaf. And then my phone broke. Oh no. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. So, I went to Saskatoon. I slept at homeless shelter for the night. Ha ha ha. And then I went to Winnipeg, Manitoba. That night was the worst. When I arrived in Manitoba, I didn't even know where to sleep. I was wandering. And I saw one Native American man wandering too. I was trying to find a place to sleep. I gave up looking and I decided to enter a hotel public bathroom. I just sat on the toilet, with my backpack as a back cushion. I literally was asleep for four hours in bathroom. And then a janitor came into the bathroom and found me. He said, oh what are you even doing here? You have to go. I didn't even know what to say. I just left. As I traveled with that kind of style, I met a lot of people. People who were alike to me. Homeless people. For example, I met one Native American man who were also homeless. We had a very good chat. He shared to me about his experience of being a hitchhiker. He lived in Churchill, Manitoba. A town in far north of Manitoba. Where it is very cold with a lot of northern lights there. I was amazed. I was planning to go there. But I was too scared. It was too cold. At that time, the temperatures were below freezing in Churchill, so that scared me off. But, well, I've met so many people. So much experience just by meeting people. So we took a picture together. And then, my phone got stolen. So, I went to Rochester, New York, and I stayed at my friend's home for one week. And then I decided to meet my mother halfway from my home, at Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And then my mother and I drove all the way back to my home. Home sweet home. So now you see. Look at me. I'm telling so many things. My mind has grown tremendously by my rich experience journey. That means you should do the same thing too. If you are struggling, honestly, you really can do it. Just get out and go. You have social security income, and that is plenty of money. You already have everything you need. You're not doing it because of your own fear. You seriously have no excuses at all. Just. Do. IT. So. Share this video. Right now. Please. Please share. Like. Subscribe my page. Please. Spread the wildfire of death awareness. Keep spreading. I will continue posting videos of how to travel with a crazy style. Let the crowd grow. If the crowd is actually growing, I will continue. Thank you. I love you all. Be powerful. Death power. Yeah.